What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahoney here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Going to be playing some expanded format today, and I've got Pika Ram on deck, one of the most hyped decks in expanded format, a powerhouse in standard. Get some brand new tricks in the form of Max Elixir. We've also got Flash Energy to protect ourselves from that pesky fighting weakness. And of course, Trainer's Mail. We've got Computer Search and Silent Lab to make sure that our Tag Bolt GX attack can go through those Mr. Mimes with the Bench Barrier. A very, very strong archetype in expanded format. Perhaps the format defining deck in expanded. I'm excited to show this deck off and see what it can do for you all today. Definitely a deck to look out for. The turn one full blitz is even easier to pull off in expanded format than it ever was in standard. Something we see all the time. Shaman EX also fantastic for this deck with that setup ability. Really excited for the new Dedene GX that's going to be coming out here soon. Uh, for standard format as well. I think Dedenne GX is incredible, especially with 160 hit points. The ability is similar to Shaman's setup, except that you have to discard your hand and then draw six. So I think it, that will be a great card for Picaram in standard format as well. And it looks like we are playing against a Hitmonchan deck. And I've heard about the Hitmonchan deck, all right? I've heard about this. I don't think that we can beat it because they're probably just going to hit and run into Wobbuffets and maybe even like a Hoopa or something. And if they just pull out a Hoopa, I think I lose. I have my one Silent Lab to try and deal with that. Otherwise, it's not happening. So this is a little bit sad. Uh, they're gonna lock my abilities turn one as well, so I cannot set up very, very bad, but I could Guzma around this thing. So that's probably what we're going to end up doing, but I'll trainer's mail a couple times first and see what we can find. I do have an N. I do also have, uh, let's see, a Juniper. Uh, I think we probably take the N seems fine um, because I have all three Guzmas in my hand, so I don't necessarily want to like burn that all down if I don't have to. Okay, and we've got an Ultra Ball. So I feel like we have to Guzma up something and then just start grinding with the deck because I feel like I kind of need my abilities. I don't really need them, I suppose. But we could probably Guzma up like this guy and then just start start playing my hand down. We could Electro Power a couple times. We're not really going to need that, so maybe we'll Ultra Ball those away. Let's, uh, let's go. We're going to get some things. So probably get myself a peek around. We want to start attaching energy to it. And then I could electro power. We're probably not going to need that. And then I suppose I could just end, go for a regular attachment, leave the Zora Aura in the active position. It's probably fine. The Guzma, peek around. I would get to set up for four. It's not bad. But then you know, uh, they're just going to hit and run back into the wall. So I think that I actually get more mileage out of just ending here. And I get to see more cards, hopefully a lightning energy. Yeah, well, would have been good, but that's fine. We're just gonna have to leave this Zara Aura out here. Two rots, okay, so we're just going to pass. That's not good, it's not good, friends, okay. So the Hitmonchan deck, I was asking my friends, is this deck real? It doesn't seem real, right? It can't actually be like real, right? Shrines, Hitmonchan, he only does 30 damage. Look at that artwork on this guy. He's just like sprinting. I don't know, he's got his fists up. Very funny, he's like running through the market square or something, <laughs> a very odd pose. But uh, alas, the Hitmonchan, seems uh, kind of legit, right? I mean, it's going to be able to hit and run into this Hoopa, that's for sure. And uh, we can't really beat that. I mean, we could try to attack with our Tapu Koko, but that's not good either. So, because the Tapu Koko is just gonna get knocked out in one hit. So how much are we actually, how much How much are we, you know, dealing here? About 100 damage to the Zero Aura? It's not great. So walls could be a thing. I think that this is a fun strategy. It's definitely unique, interesting. 
For sure. 100 damage, Wobbuffets, Shrines, the whole nine yards, right? It's just uh, a complete disaster for myself. Okay, so we really wish that we had gotten ourselves a, uh, I don't know, a Lightning Energy turn one, because then I could maybe do some stuff here. But it's cool. We're just going to have to attach, and then next turn, we'll, yep, we'll just full blitz next turn. I don't think that I can retreat this thing out of the active position because the Wobbuffet's there. So we're just kind of stuck. It's just the way it is. Uh, the tap, I mean, all these guys are just tough to take out into play. I don't really want either of them. So we probably just have to get another Zero Aura, and then I'll put the, that's fine, I suppose, and I'll put the other Picarom down next turn. When I promote this thing and then have to full blitz, but then it's just uh, it's just a feel bad. We know that this buzzwall is here with the sledgehammer. It's kind of a nightmare. I'm a little bit concerned that the power level of this deck is just a little bit low in general. I think it is very good against. Um, oh goodness, what are we what are we dealing with here? I think it is very good against Picaram. I mean, that's like for sure. If Picarom is the format defining deck in expanded format, then this deck could be legit. But uh, against all other decks like Blastoise and things like that, I mean, I guess you do have Wobbuffet, which is good, but I do worry that Blastoise could just get themselves set up with the Guzma uh, or something like that around the Wobbuffet and then just like tower and splash all your dudes. So that is definitely a point of concern for me. Okay, we are going to end up using Full Blitz. So before I do, I definitely want to max Elixir and get another energy onto here because the only way that I'm going to win this game is if I tag bolt some fools. So we'll go there. My opponent's about to take three prizes. Feels pretty bad, but uh, we've got ourselves a Full Blitz. I think I got to do that too. Yeah, probably. Yep, Full Blitz. Okay. Knock out the Wobbuffet. That's good. But then my opponent might promote this Hoopa afterwards. So I think we kind of have to go here. And then you know what? I don't know. Hope my opponent doesn't like, uh, doesn't counter my Thunder Mountain Prism Star. If they do counter my Thunder Mountain Prism Star, then I need to find my uh, Silent Lab immediately so that I can KO this Hoopa and just hope that my opponent doesn't draw any. Also, some flash energies would be mighty fine. I think that's probably on the agenda, something we need, flash energy stat. We do see some rainbow energies in this deck, so I'm curious as to like what other kind of uh, Pokemon they run in here, other than just the Hitmonchan's who is using this rainbow energy effectively. I'm very curious. Okay, so we've got this. We can use our abilities, that's good meaning that I could Dance of the Ancients here, and I desperately need, oh boy, yeah, we desperately need some stuff. So, I mean, I guess I could attack with a Tapu Koko this turn, which is interesting, but then he probably gets knocked out by a Hitmonchan, and my opponent's on their Sledgehammer turn. So I think I'm like trying to go for the, I think I'm like desperately just trying to go for the Silent Lab this turn, which is like a little bit sketch, but yeah, it's fine. We're just gonna move that energy up top, and then we're Juniper. We need, we need that Silent Lab. We did not find the Silent Lab. So, we did find a Flash energy, that's good. I wish I could search my deck, Let's see. I did get an energy switch, so I guess I can go here. This is actually kind of good. And then I can retreat to the Tapu Koko, and then I can energy switch up. So I didn't find the f I didn't find the card I wanted, but this is fine, you know? And then, and then if they don't get a Diancy out, I could make it through the turn, I suppose. We'll just mock bolt that Hoopa, get him out of here. Don't you just love attacking with Tapu Koko Prism Star? Not exactly. The man we're supposed to have in the active position, but it's fine. We'll uh, we'll work through this. 
Now, my opponent does have Diancy, so this is their four prize turn. They are going to be able to sledgehammer my Tapu Koko or a Pikara for knockout, which is game. Okay, that's game. So, this was really, really bad. I don't think that Pikaram necessarily beats the Hitmonchan deck, though I am not entirely convinced that the Hitmonchan deck beats too many other things other than Pikaram. So, definitely a meta call with the Hitmonchan deck. Very cool. I will have to look into that further. Potentially make a video on it later this week. That would be a lot of fun. But let's try to play against something that's not the Hitmonchan deck. If we could get that, that would be fantastic. I do think that we would have been much better off if I had just hit my... Um, I don't know, hit my silent lab and gone for the tag bolt to be able to go through that hoopa that turn, I think we would have been okay, because if we could just skip this ledge hammer turn, then maybe we get to live another day, right? But with, uh, <laughs> with the way that matchup played out, that was horrendous. So it's uh, definitely, definitely not a good one. Let's see. We've got the Lele in the active. Not exactly where we want her to be, but, you know, that's okay, Lele. You're kind of in the wrong place at the wrong time. We'll take that one. Definitely a much-needed <laughs> much free victory <laughs> after that whomping we just got served by the, uh, by the Hitmonchan deck. It's all good. Okay. Uno mas. Let's see if we can redeem ourselves here with a real win with... Pikaram, I think Pikaram just being able to deal 150 damage and accelerate three lightning energy onto the board on sometimes the first turn of the game. It's not always, but I'd say like pretty often you get it turn one. I think that's just extremely, extremely aggressive. You can knock out Pokemon GX turn one, Tapu Lele's, or just uh, you know, any Pokemon GX that you see in the active position. Can be knocked out turn one of the full blitz. You got plenty of electro powers, choice bands, things like that to modify that damage. Also, Zoroarks just go down really easy. You only need uh, two damage modifiers, a choice band and electro power, in order to do 210 damage to a Zorark. So surely people are trying to figure out what kind of fighting Pokemon they can throw in their decks to deal with this. And then, of course, peek around players are like, well, how can I jam as many flash energy into my deck as possible? And then fighting decks are like, well, how can I fit some enhanced stammers into my deck? To, you know what I mean? This is kind of the runaround. It feels like we're doing an expanded format right now to try and adjust to the new powerhouse that is these lightning-type decks. So... We'll see how this matchup goes here. Looks like my opponent is playing some sort of turbo deck, it, judging by the water uh, sleeves. I'm thinking that this is probably Blastoise, which should be a fine matchup for us. I think it's totally cool. We have a bunch of options to be able to deal big damage to a Blastoise. Now, that being said, Blastoise is such a crazy aggressive archetype that it really can just tee off and do absolutely anything it wants to on like the first and second turn of the game. So if I don't respond to a quick Blastoise here, we could definitely be in some trouble if my deck hesitates to function at all. Could be game over. And we see, judging by those battle compressors there, I would say yes, indeed, we are playing against a Blastoise deck. Now, uh, I'm not exactly sure that my opponent should have... <laughs> Uh, they should have battle compressored before they did the trainer's mails. I kind of messed that one up for sure, but it's all good. We're going to try and uh, own this fool here with the turn one full blitz uh, on that shaman. So that's uh, that's what we're going to go for. Let's get ourselves a peek around. We've got a comp search. We've got shamans. I mean, this just should be pretty, you know, pretty much a layup here. I think that we attach this because we can actually energy switch it off and then we are going to computer search away um, the flash energies, as weird as that is. And I think I'm just going for a max elixir to be honest. That or I could get the, ah, the stadium usually helps. We don't have the stadium. So it's gonna be max elixir town. That's probably fine. And then we're just going to start to set up. Yeah, see what we could do. Nothing, love it. And we'll set up for five, fine. See if we can at least do a little bit better than my opponent over here. Uh, I suppose I could also get myself like, oh, what do we actually have going on here? An energy switch? Oh, yikes, that doesn't actually help me at all. I think I just take the electro power just to burn it. 
so that I can set up for three. This is uh, definitely kind of a yikes, yikes setup here. But it's all good. We could pull out of this, and we could actually knock out the shaman with the mock bolt if we get enough action going on, of which it seems like we may not get enough action going on. But that's fine. Um, <laughs> we got, uh, let's see here. I suppose I could retreat. I don't quite have it. I can't attack with the Tapu Koko GX because I could retreat this thing. I could mock, you know, Dance of the Ancients, two energies into play. It's just not really all that great. My energy switch, I guess if I had taken the energy switch, it uh, wouldn't be quite enough here. So definitely a bummer start. My Lele is in the prizes, so just kind of a weird one for sure. I feel like I just have to take the Tapu Koko and just go with that. I can't use Dance of the Ancients yet. Um, it's just, uh, just a little bit tough. Yeah, it's cool. We'll just uh, we'll just retreat into the Picaram, and then uh, we'll just uh, we'll just pass, I guess. And then if my opponent doesn't bench anything else next turn, I will dance in the Ancients and knock out that Shaman. So that's kind of what we're looking at. But I think that they're just uh, yeah, they're just passing. So we we got it. All right, like not exactly <laughs> exactly the prettiest way to do this thing, but it is a way, all right, and I'm pretty sure that my opponent somehow messed up their Archies, but we'll give it one more try, okay, with the Pikaram deck in expanded format, and see if we can't get, like, a semi-real game going on here. Sky High Claws. All right, goodbye, Shaman. And uh, there's Blastoise for you, ladies and gentlemen. All right, fantastic. Uno Mas. One... One more. You guys are all here with me on this Pikaram adventure today. Let's see if we can't uh, play against something a little more substantial. That would be that'd be great. More substantial than a Shaman Pass. Less substantial than a Hitmonchan Wob deck. Please, <laughs> just why not? Just something like uh, can I get a Zorark matchup? Maybe a Blastoise that sets up. Maybe a Pikaram mirror. Something like that. Even I'll play against a Lucario deck. I feel like. Pikaram is so good that it could even beat some of the straight fighting decks, uh, except for maybe the Hitmonchan deck. But some of the straight fighting decks it can beat as well just because it has so high of a power level and the flash energies that you can just stick them in some weird situations where they can't get knockouts that they need, and then you just run them over. So let's see what we got here. My opponent uh, is playing some sort of dark fighting deck. Hopefully this is a Zorark deck and not a Hitmonchan Hoopa deck. If it is Hitmonchan Hoopa, then we are thrown in the towel in this video. And this video will just be the Pikaram gets destroyed by Hitmonchan Hoopa video, which I know is a, a <laughs> video we were all, all waiting for. Oh my goodness. All right, the moment of truth. My opponent's going first, Mr. BBA123. Who do you got and what am I dealing with? It's some sort of, what is this? Okay. They got Disable. They've got Altar of the Moon. They're going to be retreating for free. They've got Benetti and Buzzwall. Oh, alrighty then. And Sightseer. Oh, man. I have just been pitched straight to the, uh, <laughs> to the Shadow Realm of PTCGO, have I not? Oh, my goodness. I shouldn't have... Uh, Shouldn't have lost that game to Hitmonchan. You never know what you're going to see on the ladder on PTCGO. Let's see, my opponent's got Lele as well. Garbodor. This could just be like a Garb deck, which is interesting. But I'm curious as to why they're playing Sightseer in their deck. I feel like there's a lot of other probably more substantial supporters in expanded format at your disposal. Let's see what we can do, though. All right? I'm not here to criticize. I'm here to play. So... We are going to Ultra Ball away, probably the Silent. I mean, my opponent is probably going to be setting up Garbodor, so I probably don't need that Silent Lab. And then also the Lightning Energy can go as well, uh, though the Energy Switch, I guess. Yeah, we'll do that. And I need to get myself a Pika Rom. Very good. So we'll do that. 
Gonna end up max elixiring onto this thing, see what we can do, and then set up for a bunch of cards. Yay, we hit one, might be in, onto the ROM you go, and we'll set up for a draw four. Like to hit myself a Zorora and a Lightning and an Energy Switch. We already got the Energy Switch. A Zorora and a Lightning would have been good. It's cool though. We'll take the Max Elixir and then I guess I Trainer's Mail first, then my deck a little bit. Get the Nest Ball. We'll be in. We'll get ourselves a Zero Aura. Thin the deck a little bit more. So that dude's going to give us free retreats. And now we are like cruising here. We might be able to get the turn one. Just attach that thing over there. We've got Choice Band. We've got Energy Switch, I guess. But we are definitely looking down the barrel here at a uh, <laughs> at a Garbodor, Trash Lance Garb. So we don't really want to worry, you know, think about that. We need to worry about how many items we're playing for sure. We got one, two, three, four, five down right now. So I'll just end, and we'll go from there. I don't believe I've attached yet. So I think I'm cool, right? I haven't not attached yet. I believe that I just double max elixir. So if I just get myself an energy off of this, I should be able to attach it. And then I believe energy switch. I think that's where we're at. Now, hopefully we have not attached. If I have not, yes, I have not. Very good. So then we can retreat here, boom. Attached to my man, we're going to energy switch. Take that thing there, put it there. And yay, you guys get to see the turn one, full blitz. Now I would like to find another Pika Ram potentially in order to accelerate onto. And sure enough, there he is in all his glory. So I don't necessarily need to, let's see, we're gonna definitely dance to the ancients now while we can because I don't know if my opponent plays ability garb, so we're just gonna do that. And then I'm kind of cool on items for now. I feel like, I mean, I've probably played a lot at this point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 140. I could do one more. Eight, no. All right, I was like, I'm getting ready to full blitz anyway, so it's like, might as well use my max elixir because I'm sure as heck not hitting one after I full blitz. So we got the turn one, that's good. We're looking like we could probably get a turn two tag bolt GX, which is extraordinarily strong. Even if my opponent has like trash lance Garbodor that I have to worry about, I could just tag bolt one of them, which is pretty nuts. I could just neutralize that threat on the second turn of the game, which is like totally wild. Looks like this uh, Bennett deck is gonna be playing bodybuilding dumbbells, but really I'm not too worried about that because Tag Bolt does 200. I'm only gonna need one damage modifier in order to get through that tag or through that uh, bodybuilding dumbbells. Or I guess maybe two damage modifiers. Yeah, 250 hit points. Yeah, I'll need two damage modifiers, a choice band and electro power. I do need to consider how many Electro Powers have I burned? None? Oh, my opponent's not doing anything. So that's a, that's a tough one, my guy. I am uh, definitely concerned for your well-being here, considering that I am getting ready to do the thing. Yeah, let's see, four, five. I don't know why I'm double energy switching to the active position, but you know, it's it's all good. It's just, it's just what we're doing right now. Sure, and then I will gladly just, I think, let's just Colrus. Yeah, we'll put that down and we'll Colrus. Colrus for a lot, like eight cards. And at this point, um, I can just go in and just tag bolt GX. I can knock out the Shuppet and probably a Trubbish because that actually seems scarier than that Buzzwell here because I'm going around the Sledgehammer turn, so I'm not terribly concerned about that either. Let's just tag ball GX and we'll knock out that Shove It. And of course, that fella over there. So we'll go down to three prizes. My opponent hasn't taken a prize yet. Though, if they do get a uh, Trash Lanch going this turn, I didn't really play around it too much, so that's a little bit scary. And I do have to think about the consequences. We got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Oh, that's not a guaranteed knockout. They would need a choice band as well. Oh, 11. Yikes. Okay, so now they're at 11. 
which means that I am close. They are doing a potential, what, 220 damage. So they need a choice band in order to take this KO or a shrine or something. That would do it. But with 11 in the discard pile, they are doing 220 damage. Not enough. It's not enough. Isn't that crazy? I mean, I've been like recklessly burning through my deck and they still didn't get it. Absolutely absurd. So what we're going to do is transition to another Pikaram here and just full blitz with that one because I don't want to actually play any other items. So we just need to be chill here at, at full blitz. Like we are on the cusp of getting knocked out. <laughs> so we just need to not. Uh, I'll definitely attach to my Zara Aura there because Zara Aura might be who we try to finish this game off with, with maybe an energy switch or something like that. Things start to get a little bit sketchy. I also need to, I guess, kind of be careful against these garb decks. Sometimes they play, I mean, this one does not appear to be playing Dimension Valley, but if they were playing Dimension Valley, they could just go in and maybe Necrozma GX, which would be really sketchy and scary. So not something that we would want to necessarily deal with there either. I think that could be uh, very bad. So yeah, Pikaram, there it is. Got the early Tag Vault GX sauce there. Definitely, definitely a crazy strategy, something that uh, players are going to have to be worrying about at the upcoming, uh, upcoming Toronto Regional Championships. It is a powerhouse of a deck for sure. Flash Energy, Max Elixir, I mean, Shaman EX, this deck sets up as quick as ever. And what's crazy is that with Dedene GX coming out soon, uh, the deck is going to be on a pretty similar speed level in standard format, of course, but we do not get the Max Elixir. So it will be faster and more consistent in standard, but not as fast as expanded. That Max Elixir there really makes it so that turn one full blitzes are very commonplace because Max Elixir combined with the Tapu Koko Prism Star just gives us so much energy acceleration options. Let's see, my opponent's got the Garbodor. They've also got the Toy Span. This guy's going down. It's uh, really tough there. So my opponent could just win this one uh, if we can't find an N. We need to find an N to end my opponent to like three and hope that they don't have Guzma for game. That would be good um, because our dude here is hanging on by 10 hit points. 10 hit puntos. We don't want to get KO'd. So let's uh, tread carefully here. My opponent needs to not announce another trash lance. They need to not Guzma. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see what we could do. All right, we're going to energy switch up to our dude here. You have to take one off there, move it there. And then we also need to probably just burn our whole deck down, to be honest. We'll like play all this stuff. Oh, I just have it. They put a Lele down. I don't really know what I'm doing here. That's all good. <laughs> it's just, it's just goose with a Lele, dude. <laughs> uh, that Lele was not down there before, but now it is. So we get to full blitz for a game. So that's all good. We'll take it. Two prizes, GG's to my opponent in the final N, I believe, was prized anyway. So good games. Pika Ram doing his thing. Hitmonchan. Not a great matchup, though. Yep, a little bit worried about the whole Hitmonchan thing. That being said, definitely a solid deck. A ton of fun to play. Make sure to check it out if you are going to expanded tournaments in the upcoming weeks. Definitely a pretty fire deck. So thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell, check out the Etsy store, Patreon stuff, Teespring and Full Grip Games all in the description below. Y'all rock. Have a great day. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to give my Twitch channel a follow as well. I stream every single weekday on Twitch, twitch.tv slash tricky gym. And big shout out to everybody who supports me over on Twitch as well. Y'all are amazing. Have a great day. Peace.